All right, so in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating the use of uh, Swatchmaker for Crazy Talk Animator 2. The first thing you'll notice is that you'll see this uh, splash screen here. That's because I created it using a trial version of uh, Zinc. This uh, Zinc is a program, or rather was a program, that allowed people to convert their SWF or Flash-based programs into actual standalone applications that you can run on any computer system. Um, unfortunately, by the time I finally was able Able to afford to buy a license for it uh, the company went out of business and uh, there's no way for me to actually buy a license at this point even if I can't afford it so I'm providing this program as is um, I don't have a Mac version so it only works on Windows and um, I'm not planning on giving any additional support on this so whatever you see on this video that is it uh, basically, the way Swatchmaker works is that it allows you to create a color swatch of your choosing by basically using this fancy little color picker here, which is a little bit better than um, Crazy Talk's actual color picker. Well, it doesn't really have one. Um, once you have the color that you want, in this case, I got this nice little shade of indigo here. You can click the little check mark option, wait a few seconds. And it'll go through this process where it creates an SVG file and then converts that SVG into an SWF file. Uh, once that file is created, you're going to see a flash file here, an SWF file, uh, with the name of the actual color that you created. If we run it, you can see that color right here. Now, the way that these work is that once you have your swatch, you just drag and drop it directly into the window, into the Crazy Talk window. And uh, once your flash file is in there, it's a vector file, you can go into the Prop Composer, select it, and go into Vector Grouping Mode. All right, here, uh, it obviously has different areas here. That's your base color. You have, here you have your uh, shadow, you have your highlight and you have an outline. We're not really gonna worry about these. Those are mainly just for visual reference purposes. It's reminiscent of my Toon Titan coloring software. Um, but the only one that we're really concerned with is this primary uh, base color here. So we're going to assign this one, for example, to the skin color. You can assign it to whatever body part you want to use. It depends on what you want to assign this color to. In this case, let's say we want to assign this uh, purplish color to a character's skin. So we're gonna assign it to skin one, hit apply. And uh, we're gonna go out again. And uh, let's find a little actor character here. Do, 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 do. Projects, actor. Uh, let's just drop this guy here. So by selecting a prop that has now been configured to work with uh, render styles, we can select it, click on the Apply Selected Render Style button, and then we select the object. And I have no idea why it's not working. Let's try it again. Maybe this character is not render style enabled. Let's try a different one. Yeah, it's not a render stock character. So let's see here. Here's a Sol G2 and render stock compatible. We're going to select it, the color swatch, and we're going to apply it. And now he has purple skin. So let's say we want to change his hair color to some kind of uh, different color, some, some shade of green maybe. Let's create a swatch. Let's go into the green areas here. And it should be this one right here. Yep, it's right there. So we're going to drop it into the software. We're going to go into the Prop Composer, select it, press the Vector Grouping tool, select the main base color, and assign it to maybe um, Upper one, it's usually the shirt. Hair one, usually the main part of the hair. So let's do the hair first. So we'll click that and we'll apply it. So there's our hair, that's for hair one. 
let's say we also want that same color for hair too all I have to do is go in here update that reassign it to hair number two hit apply we'll do this select it and now he has a solid colored hair with the same color and that shading whatever it was is now gone um let's see what else can we do with this let's say we want to use uh, a different colored shirt let's uh let's go with a bit of a reddish color well we already have red let's try something else we can also type in the colors directly so i'm just going to type in a random color here and even though I, I added the color and I pressed my check mark, the software's still gonna work even though it doesn't give me a live preview of the color that I entered manually. But let's see here. That's the color that I just created right there. So I'm gonna bring that color into the software, give it a render style. We're gonna, we're gonna assign this one to the shirt which is upper one. I'm gonna go out and then apply it to our character. So it makes the coloring process a little bit easier, a little bit more visual. It's not always gonna be perfect. CTA itself, Crazy Talk Animator 2, does have a few bugs here and there, for example. Notice that this particular shade of purple, once I added the render style, it actually made my color a little bit more purple. So it added an extra bit of tint to it. So you're going to have to do some experimentation to find the actual color that you want in the event that this happens. I have no idea why it happens. It's a bug. Uh, it hasn't quite been addressed yet, but they are aware of it. Um, but in most cases, it will give you the exact color that you want, uh, and it's a great way to do it. And uh, the cool thing about this is that because you're creating props, you can easily go in here uh, into your props area, go to custom, and create yourself a nice little folder here called custom colors, for example. So I'm going to make a library of skin colors here. And uh, let's see here. This one's already assigned to the skin one. I'm gonna reassign these real quick. I'm gonna reassign all of these to skin one. So now I have three individually uh, three individual skin colors and I can go in here and under my skins folder and I can save them call that one purple I'll call that one gray blue and I'll call this one green okay I can take these colors reassign them to hair and I can create my own library of hair colors so this is a great way for you to have predefined colors that apply to uh, your characters different body parts and stuff so going forward you know in the future you don't have to go through this process again and even at this point you can use these as starter colors and I'm going to demonstrate that in a minute so I'm gonna go in here, grab a an actor. This is uh, Emma. She's a G2 RS character. Um, in other words, she's a render style compatible character. Uh, then I'm gonna go into my scene where I have my custom colors already set up. So I'm gonna give her green skin. Have it make sure it's selected. Click the apply render style button and just click on your character. Now she has green skin but maybe I want the gray blue skin. It's as easy as that. Now these can also be starter colors because you can take any of these colors and further modify them using your render style options. So I can take this and make it brighter or darker. I can adjust the contrast. 
so it still retains the original shades or hue but it tweaks it a little bit uh, and then I can actually change the, the main hue itself so now that I have that maybe that's what I want for my skin tone maybe reduce the saturation or increase it but once I have that I can actually go back in my content manager and have that one that modified version save it for future use I'm gonna call it uh, I'm gonna call it brown even though it's not a true brown but I can create an entire library of color swatches this way it's very easy and it's pretty much free um, and there's really nothing stopping you from just creating your own uh, you know your own libraries and sharing between y'all um, but they work just fine I select it render style apply so I don't know hopefully you guys find this useful I was I'm never I was never able to publish this because by the time like I said I was able to afford to buy the license to Zinc uh, the company that creates that program uh, went out of business and now I can't really finish it and I have no plans of going any further with it so I'm gonna release it for free you can find it in the real illusion forums um, and um, I don't know. Have fun with it. I'll, I appreciate your comments. If you want to send uh, donations, you know, if you think this uh, this was uh, helpful, uh, yeah, send me a couple bucks. Buy me a little cup of coffee. Uh, my uh, PayPal address is tunetitan at gmail.com. And um, uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, there's no cost for this. It's totally free. Um, but again, I'm not going to be providing tech support. If you break something, it's your own, um, uh, I guess, responsibility. And um, I'm not going to be providing any additional tutorials or any additional like customer support on this. So use it at your own risk. And uh, if you're able to use it, great. If not, then I'm sorry. I apologize, but it's not one of my commercial endeavors. So I'm not really motivated to continue developing it.